new Marvel movie is coming out. It's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which I just really like those movies. There's always a lot of a lot of things and it influences society in a way and, and it introduces concepts such as, you know, the multiverse, for example. And if you've watched my latest video about Christ consciousness, you will see that I talk about a nexus point and 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 that being the, the commonality between all the different universes of in the multiverse, the one commonality is the fact that there is a fracture at some point where that one line separates and forks into different things. And that's a first concept that, that I saw in the TV series on Disney Plus called Loki, uh, which was really good. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, yes, the cross and Jesus Christ, that's what happens. Like he knows what's gonna happen to him. And every time within all the different timelines, he chooses to sacrifice himself and that's the connection that's that's a point where there's uh there's a supernova there's an explosion there's a forking there's many different timelines just a quick intermission but when the character of owen wilson who is an agent of the tva signs he only signs with his initials which are reminiscent of mary magdalene and even my series of meeting mary magdalene which is M M M because his name is Mobius M. Mobius. And I do believe that this TV show has like the hidden divine feminine encoded into the TV show because also one of the first scene starts in South of France where there is a church and a connection to the Black Madonna as in the real actual church that is mentioned but not filmed contains a Black Madonna icon. And that was very powerful for me to notice this within the first minutes, so going back to the Louvre and Scarlet Witch, intermingling the male gaze, the feminine body, the feminine story, and how it all is shown and extracting itself out of it all. So I was like, you know, let's, uh, let's obviously go see it on the first day because I don't want to have spoilers. So I'm going to see that movie, Doctor Strange. And in it, there's obviously the multiverse, which is also something that we talk about as a society with the metaverse, uh, where we're creating a simulation, a different reality that we're going to explore and live in, as well as the real life. And then I was like, oh my god, like the, the main character of this movie is Wanda, the Scarlet Witch. And uh, which is very exciting because she is a woman in red. and she is a witch and she is wearing scarlet clothes which are all very big components of the mary magdalene story so it it all ties in together i'm excited i i should be wearing red today but i'm not let's embrace the pink all right enough rambling let's go <laughs> Thank you.
so I ended up not really enjoying Doctor Strange because of what was happening to Scarlet Witch and how I don't know what they did to her character. I'm not gonna go into the spoilers, but it was very reminiscent of even what happened to Mary Magdalene, who was understood to be a very important person after the death of Jesus and she was sharing his message. She actually has a gospel and if you enjoy what I'm talking about, I have a whole series called Meeting Mary Magdalene with many videos where I I explain what the hidden side, the hidden reality of Mary Magdalene is, but the church uh, fearing the power that women had within the early Christianity decided to decided to defame her and to use specific words for people to turn away from her or to just apply their own ideas on her. So it's kind of interesting that that was happening, like Scarlet Witch, because she is usually called as the Scarlet Woman because she is portrayed as wearing red, which is a sign of being a priestess or even a witch. And Mary Magdalene is, well, right here she's naked and she is uh, portrayed as being repentant of asking for forgiveness which is also part of the whole the whole theme and the whole model of what they wanted her to be um, as far as you know the, the fifth century when they started to change the image to change her image and this specific statue is in the Louvre and it is from Germany it was made by an artist called Gregor Erhardt who was you know thought to be born in 1470 we're not sure and who died in 1540 so this is a 16th like very early 16th century effigy or icon she is believed to have been built for the church of saint mary magdalene in augsburg in germany and yeah she has been in the louvre since 1902 Actually, during the Nazi occupation, she was uh, taken away and brought to Germany on the orders of Göring, and she has been restituted. She has been... So she has returned to the Louvre since then. And I wanted to meet... I wanted to meet her. I wanted to, to see what happens when I go to, you know, statue, which is very different from when you meet them in their setting in a church. It's very different to meet them under the glass, but this one, this one is, it, it's a polemic for me. She's portrayed in a specific way. She is absolutely naked. Her hair hides specific parts. Also, she's almost human sized. She is very, very tall. And it was quite something to be meeting her in such closeness because, you know, again, when she's not in a church, high above on a pillar, she's kind of you know facing me i can meet her eyes it is it's very different and it's also something that we would consider sacred and being under a glass it makes her feel very familiar very object like and on the energetical side i didn't feel much actually for me what was happening was how she captured the attention of the people around and that was that was very powerful. She was subjugating everyone's eyes, and that was that was something because in our days this type of art might not be the most popular, and yet here she was. If you ever go to the Louvre, go say hi to her. She's my friend. <laughs> she can be yours. And I hope to see you for the next video and for this whole series on Mary Magdalene, the Divine Feminine. Bye. <laughs>